Hi, Libra. How are you? This is your homework family reading. You know, lighting our, ca our candle. Bring some light into the subject. Homework family reading for June 1st through the 15th. I'm starting off with Libra because, well, that's where spirit took me when I first asked. And it kind of makes sense. Because spirits... All right. I'm going to be starting with the platform, meaning right around the first. What I'm feeling for you all is a juggling act. Sorry, let me grab my cards here because I didn't get anything ready. I just came in and started making the video. Um, I'm feeling a juggling act, meaning, oh, Libras, I love you guys. And I, th I have a lot of friends that are Libras. I've had a lot of people that I've cared about and been very close to that are Libra. and. You all always want balance. You want harmony. You want peace. And unfortunately, usually, you give it to everyone else at the cost of yourself. And that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. Like, what's going on with the energy. I'm being told that you do have um, some outgoing energy right here around the 1st of June. It is going to be outgoing energy. It's action that you need to start taking within your physical path. Uh, you may end up getting, you know, into intuition and guidance of what those actions need to be taken within those physical path. But you need to actually take them, is what I'm being told. Because I'm feeling a lot of overwhelmed, burdened. energy, like stagnant energy, like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, is what I'm getting a lot of, and um, it's, it just feels like you're carrying the burdens on your shoulders, and instead of moving forward in a healthy way, you're trying to find the best way to create balance and harmony around you, but not really for you, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, that doesn't count. I haven't even started asking questions yet. I'm just pre-shuffling for Libra. This is for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus and Libra, but that's the first initial an uh, feelings that I'm getting when I start asking questions. Uh, hold on. I'm being given something else. There is a grief and a sadness that may be there as well. And it's going to also be dealing with the heart chakra, is what I'm being told at this moment as well for many of you Libras, for whichever ones it is that I'm connecting with. Now, when I hit the astrology, before I go into the cards, let me turn this so it's at Libra. <clears throat> I've been getting a lot, when I, when I first started, you know, coming into spirit and asking them, you know, what this, what, what we were going to be doing for the reading and stuff. And they were giving me Libra. You guys, like I said, you're. I feel like you're a juggling act. I feel like you're the moderator. And it makes sense for what's going on in astrology. Because that's your universal first house. You know, if we're taking it from a Libra point of view. And this would be your core energy. Your self-awareness. Your physical body. Your personality. Your appearance. Your self-identity. As far as Libras go. But... In Libra, in astrology right now, there is Pallas, Haumea, and I'm not never sure if I'm saying it right, Ma Maki Maki or Make Make. I believe Maki Maki is a fish. This is why it's always messing with my head. But um, this feels like a moderator, like the watcher, the overseer. And as you're trying to oversee, you're holding all of... All, everything on your shoulders. Like you're trying to be responsible for everything and you can't be, babe. You just can't be. But Haumea is our collective consciousness in your sign. Your collectively consciousness, you know, your consciousness is collective in looking at, you know, how the uh, balance and harmony is not where it is not. That's part of your makeup. You can't help but to try to make harmony. 
and you notice where it's not, and you try to shift it to make it better for everybody. The problem here is, is strategic thinking. You have Athena, the warrior goddess, in this area, which is trying to give you strategic thinking and making you feel overwhelmed of needing to control the situation so that you can, you know help your core energy shine better, illuminate, make, you know, right from the bat, everything be healthier. And that's fine. But see, all of this conversation is also speaking with, I believe it's, like I said, make, make, or maki, maki. And this is where you are on the lotus flower. Most people aren't going to be talking about how may are, or maki, maki, or make, make. Um, if they even talk about palace, the, uh, uh, uh in astrology. And, this energy of maki maki or make make, like I said, is the lotus flower. Where are you on the blooming of the lo lotus flower? Are you still sifting through the muddy, shitty, dirty, mucky mar water? Because that's where the lotus flower blooms from. It grows out from the dirt. It grows out from the muck, from the ugh, more or less. And then it starts to rise and break through to the water where it starts to breathe and find healthiness. And then it starts to grow and stretch its way towards the light. So where are you on this part of your life? Are you starting to break through? Are you still in the muddy, murky water? Or are you starting to stretch towards the light? And if you're in the muddy, murky water, the question first off has to be, why? What's keeping you there? And with that, then you want to step into that collective consciousness of what it is that's keeping you there or wherever it is you are on your path. And then into the Athena, which is right there with you, you know, and helping you figure out the strategic thinking of how you're going to move yourself. Because that's the very first thing that I'm being given by spirit automatically is... You know, the juggling act, the trying to balance everything. It's like the justice card. You're trying to be the justice card. You're a human being. You can't be the justice card. And you're not responsible for holding justice for everything. You're only responsible for holding justice for yourself. Harmony and balance for yourself. And where that takes your life with that. And you need to remember that. Because I very much feel like I'm being told to say that right now. Hi, Mr. Neptune. Kitty Kitty's trying to come up here. Um, let me put this back in order. When I start looking at astrology in general, most of this energy is going to be from your third house. No. From your fourth house, your karmic home. A little bit of butt in your face. Why not? <laughs> um, from your fourth house universally up to your tenth house. And see... What's going on here is a whole lot of opposition from the inner home, the karmic home of who and what you are, the soul that you can't get away from, and the outer community. It's like like a juggling act of trying to find the balance of not losing yourself, is what I'm seeing. And your outer community is where you nest, for one. It's where you're nesting because that's... For that's that's cancer. So your outer community can also be a little bit. It's it's the crab as far as the totems go. Um, so are you showing yourself? I mean, are are you being, you know, having your inner shell on? I mean, your your outer shell on. Like the crab is a shell. I mean, are you coming out of your shell or are you hiding within it is part of the question. Because like I said, this is an opposition that's going on in your, from a Libra standpoint, from your fourth house to your tenth house. And this is speaking right off the bat of the rules, walls, and boundaries that you have to start shifting, changing to rebirth yourself for you know, a, a spiritual healthy shift. And it's coming into setting new foundations for you in the soul. For you, the home that you can't get away from. Because you live here. You can't get outside of this. You can't go away from this. You know, it is dealing with your home and your family as well. But it's definitely what is it that's that 
helps you to find the authentic you and be yourself and experience it and shine it outwardly towards everybody and still be able to have your outer community. Something in there is needing to be shifted is what I'm being shown. It's going to be speaking to you a lot of the other people, your other relationships, your outer world, your social um, abilities, your you know social life, your extrovert side of you. This is the from the descendant side of um, your astrology that we're talking about. It's going to be also coming into your material world, your professional world, the top priorities of that outer world and what makes the rest of your life tick healthy. So that's the question is, what, what are you doing in your outer life and is it making your life tick? in a healthy way, is what you're going to be noticing a lot during this time. Now, you're going to have the full moon. Is it? No, it's a new moon that's going to be taking place on the 3rd in Gemini. For you, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's your ninth house. That's your ninth house. And... The sun is actually in in this in here at this time, right? Yeah, the sun is actually in here at this time. So this is going to be your inner and your outer world, your higher self and your ego colliding and speaking to yourself from Gemini, which is, you know, for you, the ninth house. So, wow, for you, that's kind of like, I call Gemini Jekyll and Hyde. So you're not, you're having, you might be having trouble realizing if you're coming from, soul or ego. I say that a lot when I'm talking to some of the people who I'm very close with. You know, I'm I'm really good at soul or ego. But when it's right on the line, when you're starting to trip in that direction, sometimes even, I mean, I, and I don't mean even I, but I mean, we all have those issues. Sometimes you don't know if you just kind of went a little too far in the ego and you still think that you're on the soulful side or not. And I think you're going to be feeling like you got to keep that in check right then. You know, right around that that new moon on the 3rd. And it's going to be having, you know, like I said, it's it's in your higher self. So, it's your philosophy, it's your religion, it's the way you look at things, but it's also speaks to you about your your psychic abilities, that universal ninth house. So you really need to get in touch with you and your truths. You know, not just your higher self, but it is your higher self, but the truths of what you are and your personal Jekyll and Hyde so that you can understand what that sun and moon is trying to help you learn. When it comes to that new moon. Because new, be new moons are all about new beginnings. New goals. New directions. So something is coming out that's shifting. That's helping you see what has to take place at that time. And. Trying to pull it back up for a second. Then we also have. Mercury. Is moving into Cancer. The very next day. On the 4th. Which for you is. Your seventh house. So that's going to be. No, that's Taurus. Wait. That's not your ninth house. Sorry. It's, it's going into your tenth house. I can't count. It'll be moving into your 10th house, which is your outer community itself. So your communication with your outer community is going to be sitting on top of Venus at that time. Mars at that time. As they're both going to be in Cancer. No, sorry, Mercury and Mars. I had it upside down. So it'll be Mercury and Mars, like I said. At that point, Mercury's moving in to Cancer. So it's bringing it closer to that, is bringing it closer to the South Node. But for you, that's the 10th house. So this is talking about your outer community and 
again, what you must learn about that outer community that makes it makes it now change for you. The North Node is all about what we have to learn in order to move forward in our life. So there's something going on in that outer community of your life that, you know, Mercury coming in is going to bring extra communication to. It's also going to... uh be speaking with Mars about your passion, your action, your aggression. This could be your political area. This could be your jobs. This could be situations that are that deal with the job, like the people in your life, and and in that way. So you're going to be noticing all of that right around the third and the fourth. Venus, which is your ruler, is also going to be um, moving in to Gemini on. What day? On the 8th. And that goes right back. That's going right back to um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. To your ninth house. Where your higher self is. So, you're going to be extra sensitive about your soulfulness. This isn't a bad thing. This is, this could be a very good thing. It just depends on how honest you're being with yourself. You're going to be very sensitive about your soulfulness. Your higher self is trying to communicate with you about things on an egotistical level that need to shift because it's no longer serving you. And then it's coming into the outer community itself, which is branching out into, you know, your goals, your dreams, your wishes, your desires, um, as well as your... um your jobs, your careers, political arena, in some sense. But this whole thing is also bouncing directly back to your universal fourth house and the rules, walls, and boundaries that makes it safe and healthy for you. Understanding what the proper balance is that makes it safe and healthy for you as you go from the 1st to the 15th. But you're going to definitely be noticing this right in the beginning of the month. Now... I'm being given for the platform right there at the first through the fifth. I mean, right there at the first. I'm being given the five of cups. I'm trying to make sure I'm high, having it high enough. I've been. I noticed I wasn't having it high enough at for at first. So you're feeling like I say, like your cup has been tipped over. Your weight. There's weight on the heart. There's weight on the shoulders. Um. It feels like you're in a setback. You got a little bit worry, uh, distress and worry going on. This is, uh, there is a possibility for redemption in the situation, but at the moment you're not feeling it. The moment you're kind of feeling thrown off by it. You're feeling like you're stuck. And then I'm being given the Empress. The Empress is, is, is Mother Earth. The Empress is Mother Earth. She is a nurturing energy. She is a of a, a, a fruit for fillness. Sorry, I'm trying to move my lighter here so I can move my leg. She's fruit for fillness. She's inspiring. She's productive. She's nurturing. She's trying. This is you how you're feeling. You know, overwhelmed, stuck, stagnant. Because that's what I'm feeling is a lot of stagnant burdens and overwhelms and stuck in the coulda, shoulda, woulda. Don't do that to yourself. The coulda, shoulda, woulda is bad. I coulda, sh I coulda done that. I shoulda done that. I wish I would have done this. Coulda, shoulda, woulda's are bad. It's your inner evil talking shit to you about what you can't change. So you need to throw that out the window. But the burdens and the overwhelm that you're still carrying, you're getting the Empress on top saying really that you're not connecting with it, but that you need to. That if you connect with that higher self, that higher searching of soulfulness, that, and you give yourself the nourishing you need, then you're going to be coming into a whole new flourishing feeling. You'll be moving into a much healthier place. But if you aren't giving yourself that proper love, respect, and nourishment that you need, then she can't. It's, it's like Earth supports us. It gives us everything we need. But if we're not taking care of it, how well can it really continue to support us if we destroy it? Same kind of concept here. You have to give yourself that love so you don't destroy yourself trying to create harmony and balance because all you're doing is making things good for everybody else and not for you. It has to start with you. 
Okay? Then, with that, with what, it's exactly what I was saying. Then comes the Holy Grail. You have the Ace of Cups, which is saying now you're coming into your unconditional love. Come into your unconditional love. Let the Empress get out of that overwhelming energy. Let the Empress lead you to your higher self, to your unconditional love. So that if you can come into that unconditional love, you'll start to find a whole new path and a whole new direction is coming up. But you might want to sit still for a little bit. You might want to sit still in that because I'm getting, you know, the hangman, which is Virgo. Right now, I also have um, Mars, Scorpio on the board. I have Taurus and water signs as well as Virgo. Um, because this is the sacrifice and the commitment it takes to make that new beginning start, to make that new path start, the new direction, the new healthiness. But you have to go in for a little bit of time and work on that. This is that Odin energy. Odin hung himself from the tree, I think it was for, I'm not sure, seven days so that he could learn the higher learning. This is somewhat of what you are going through in your own right. You're going through your own Odin learning of getting what you need to get for self-discovery so that you can move forward. But with that self-discovery, we'll change your outer community. I'm being given the sun right off the bat. This is saying, you know, this is your illumination. This is what helps you survive. This, we don't live without the sun. We need the sun to nurture us. What was I just saying? So as we come out of the... Uh, platform and we actually start to move into the month here from the first through the 15th they're starting off with the sun you need to nurture yourself you need to give yourself that proper love bring it you know that healing energy up from your heart to your head that's part of what this shoulder problem is that I say that many people have when they feel overwhelmed and their shoulders and their neck is bothering them, so to speak. That is because the head is ruling it. It's not the heart. The heart isn't being able to communicate upwardly with, you know, the the heart isn't able to communicate upwardly to the heart. I mean, to the head. The head's trying to rule things, but it isn't listening to the heart. You guys are good at trying to create balance. But are you bringing it straight up from the heart to the crown? Because the crown needs to be illuminated. The crown needs to be able to nourish you, is what this is. And if you allow your higher self to start nourishing you, then you're going to see a whole bunch of new changes and directions start moving forward. Now, is there anything else that you have to say about the incoming energies? Because we're already on the second deck. Um... The incoming energies for Sun, Moon, Rising, Libras for June 1st through the 15th. Sun, Moon, Rising, Libras for June 1st through the 15th. What is this incoming energy? Sagittarius energy. You're going to be all over the board. You are really going to be all over the board. Sagittarius is very much on the go. Very much on the go. Very much, let me learn. Let me learn, I want to understand, let me discover, and let me go, and let me go, like, right now. <laughs> That's pretty much what Sagittarius is. It's on the go, 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 and it is passion and fire. You're going to be getting into your fire energy, but you're experiencing it not just within yourself, but outwardly. And like I said, you're still trying to bring in all that energy, I feel. And understand what's going on around you and make those proper shifts according to what your soul desire is, where your inner fires are. But you need to make sure that Sagittarius is very much something wants to understand from a higher perspective. Somewhat, it's, it's an emotional Aquarius. It wants to understand from an Aquarius's point of view, but with the emotions. And let's go, go, go. So it's also the arrow. It's also the arrow and, like, the, the, uh, 
I can't think of what they're called. The horse, the half man, half horse that's got the arrow. That That's also what they are. I mean, that's what he has right here on him. I mean, this is also speaking to you about your freedom. You want your freedom. Don't let something get in the way of your freedom. Make sure that you're doing what you... Yeah, I'm just... So, yeah, especially your freedom is important for right now. Your freedom is something that you definitely do not want to push aside. If you're pushing it aside because you're trying to make things better and finding the happiest balance then you're going to feel more of that overwhelmed, you know, confusion. You're going to feel more of that <coughs> burden energy. You want to follow your passion right now. You don't want to let that <coughs> get away from you or put it on the back burner is what I'm being told. Anything else before I move into the next deck? What other energies does Libra need to be aware of? Well, that's just way too many. for. The 1st through the 15th. Sun, moon, rising. I felt you in there, but you slid past me. Were you it? No, just happens to be the way I shuffled it. So, sun, moon, rising, Libra. Sun, moon, rising, Libra. And Venus in Libra. What's coming at them from the 1st through the 15th? Help us understand. I don't like that vibration. I want a better one. I'm sorry. You all will hear me as you start seeing this from time to time. If I don't like a vibration, I will not take it. I'll be like, you need to help us elevate higher. Help us elevate Libra higher. So they understand, you know, this, this incoming energy. But help us elevate, elevate it in a higher point. All right, you're hiding from me. They make it difficult sometimes. Pluto. Death, decay, and destruction for renewal, rebirth, and regeneration. This is coming in next to Saturn this whole time in Capricorn. Where is this for you? It's taking place in your fourth house. This is speaking to you about what you've gotten too close to home, comfortable about thinking it's acceptable when it's not. And it's creating issues with the home of who and what you are. You need to soulfully let yourself create new. New rules, new walls, new boundaries. From who you are, this is what we've been saying the whole time. From, from who you are, from the beginning. From the home itself and the home itself both this is about making shifts and changes for new lighter passageways for you new new beginnings new directions this is spiritually soulfully looking at the home of who and what you are and uplifting it with new rules walls and boundaries to set that foundation of what's acceptable as you look outwardly into the world and those relationships that you have with the world on the outside of your actual life. So they're saying you definitely are going to be working with, you know, letting letting what's dead go. Letting what's dead go. Don't try to hold on to it and make it better. If it's done, it's done. It's what they're saying. Let it go. As we're moving into the third deck, we get the moon. This is you are still dealing with your subconscious. Um, this is redempt, redemption of the fallen spark within yourself. Redemption of the fallen sparks within yourself is what the moon is speaking to you of. It's going to speak to you of your highs and your lows. It is, on a universal level, it's your 12th house. On a universal level, it's your 12th house. But the moon in the cards for you is... So this may be taking place <laughs> in your 6th house. This is how you take care of yourself. This is the service that you put out as well as the service that you give to yourself. This is your health, your diet. This is also, you know, ruled by Virgo... 
in that sense is also, you know, the organizer within, which is what you are. I mean, it's speaking to you of self and below. So it's finding the inner fires from deep within you, finding the inner spark, relifting what has fallen from inside of you, rebirthing yourself by listening to your inner depths what it is you truly want and desire. No more shit. No more no more trying to make it better for everybody else. You gotta first start off with making it better for yourself. That doesn't mean that everybody else can go fuck off. I mean, it doesn't mean that at all. But it does mean that if you don't care about your own life and your own happiness and your own freedom and your own love for your own life, then you can forget the rest because it'll all be a lie and you'll be setting it in the wrong direction. This is what the moon is saying. Dig deep. Dig deep into what it is you want. This is a resurrection from the inner night of yourself, from the darkness. This is helping you out of any darknesses that you may feel that you have and how, and how you should move through it. Surfing your inner waters, babe. All right, what else does... Nope. Hi, gorgeous, Mr. Neptuni. Throw that on the floor. What else does Libra need? Oh, 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 I already have it. It's the change. What was I just saying? A lot of this is coming from that Scorpio full moon. The Scorpio full moon was helping us really dig deep into some of that stuff that needed to shift and change and what wasn't serving us anymore by learning from what... what was so this is the energy still coming up up into that new moon and into the new direction past the new moon so starting these new goals by seeing deep down into our inner Jekyll and Hyde for you all of what these changes need to be because this is two of uh two of discs which is more or less two of pentacles this is making the change finding your yang and your yang this is creating above and below from within yourself creating the above and the below bringing them together into one this is how actual balance is created by honestly finding balance not by putting yourself to the side this is the inside out that's basically what, uh, what I'm being told. It's taking the inside and pulling it out of you, honey. But you first have to make it through this Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is saying you are going to be fighting some of this. Because you're fighting your waters of delusion and rot. You want to believe in those delusions. You want to believe, believe in those inner waters. How do I put it a lot of times when I'm talking about Pisces energy? Because this is Scorpio and Pisces. It is Scorpio, actually, but it feels more Pisces to me at the time. This is, you know, death, birth, rebirth. This is letting go of what doesn't serve you. Because it's coming with the Ace of Discs. So, by, cre by letting go of what's not serving you, what is still delusion, what we're still holding on to, and the nostalgia of the past... When we look back at the past, we make the mistake a lot of times of looking back at a situation and going, in our mind, it was so much better than it really was. The memory was so much better than it really was. Are you remembering correctly? I mean, this is, like I said, this is a new birth. This is a new birth, a new birth taking place. But it will not take place if you do not sift through those delusions your water, water of delusions and rot. Basically, this is what this is. This is Scorpio and Venus, or Venus and Scorpio. So this is over emotional shifting of the death and the rebirth. If you're holding on to what doesn't serve you anymore because you got comfortable with it, and because you're afraid to rebirth, you're never going to get to the new beginning. You need to understand that. Is there anything else? That they need to know. Well, that was just not acceptable. It was like six cards all flipped over. What I need is the one that's on the bottom. <laughs> <clears throat> Patience with yourself, baby. You have the eight of discs, which is the eight of... What is it called? Anyway, eight of discs in this deck. Um Which is speaking to you of patience. This is you've got to await the proper ripening the ripening, the harvest. You can't harvest 
if it's not time to harvest. You need, like I said, right off the bat, this is going to be a little bit of a time from the 1st through the 15th that you're going to be doing some inward searching, some inward diving and helping yourself figure out what it is that you need to let go of, what's no longer serving you. Because there's definitely some changes from the core of who you are and your inner self, your inner home, and what's acceptable, how do you ha how do you take care of yourself, how do you love yourself, how do you heal yourself, you know, how, how do you respect and love yourself, point blank, and then take that into the outer community. No, it doesn't fit, it's not hot. Give me something high to leave them with. A high vibrational frequency to help them as they move forward. For Libra, all sun, moon, rising, and Venus, Libras. Yeah, I'm being told again this has a lot to do with just growth. Growth in your physical world, but starting from inside. It's inside out, like that last card was saying. <coughs> questions. Asking yourself the proper questions. What you are thinking is absolutely correct. It takes courage to trust yourself, especially when everyone else points in a different direction. It takes courage to trust in yourself. Very true. Something, you know, we all need to be reminded of. Why are you all flipped over on accident? Anything else here before I hit my last little healing deck? Anything else that Libra needs to know, help them move forward in the most positive and healing way from June 1st through the 15th. This seems like it's very beautiful energy. It's a rebirthing. I mean, you're coming into a rebirthing. The only thing that can stop you from rebirthing is you. Really. I mean, the only thing that can stop you from rebirthing is you. You've got to trust in yourself, believe in yourself, and know that you're worth it. Remember, baby, you're worth it. How can you ever bring balance and harmony and justice to everything around you if you can't experience it for yourself? Then you're just a hypocrite trying to give out an idea of what you believe and you don't actually understand what it is. Okay, and we also have... It is all about how you see the situation. If you are looking at it for, if you are looking for the negatives, you will find them because there are many there. But try to look for the positives. There are plenty of them as well. And as I'm reading this, my eyes are getting fuzzy, which means a lot of you just are fighting the change. Fighting the change. Because if you weren't fighting the change, you'd be able to see the positive path easier. It's just easier to stick with what you know. And there's many changes that need to be made to make it healthy for you. So you need to be willing to view those negatives for what they are, is what this is meaning, if my eyes are going all weird. Um, you need to be able to view the negatives for what they are because the positives might be scary and making the changes, making the new, you know, death and rebirthing may be scary, yes. There may be people in your life that you're leaving behind. There may be situations you're leaving behind. But you'll never know what that new path is unless you're willing to let it go and look past what you already know. Because obviously something there is meant to change. All right, Libras, is there anything last? Lastly, that is a high vibrational energy that will help Libra move forward in a positive and healthy healing way. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, Libras. One last thing for them today. All right, you're like in this little mix right here. I feel it, but I don't know where. It is, be aware that your thoughts and your feelings are just as impractical as your actions. And, I know there was still another one here. I think 
think I found it already because I pulled it and sat it down. But I wasn't sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Make clear, calm thinking. Make clear, calm thinking your goal for this month from the 1st through the 15th. And it should help you redirect yourself. Yep. And it just popped right back up as soon as I threw it in the deck. It came right back out. Make clear, calm, clear, calm thinking your goal. So, this is all about helping you move forward in a brand new way. The only thing that's stopping you is you. So, will you? I love you guys. And I will see you from the 15th through the 30th, 30th I think, of June. Blessings. Bye. Oh.